What's good, YouTube? It's your boy Justin Falls. We back at it again with another video, and we looking at some more Atomic Heart. Let's get it. Let's get it. The, the pre audio, the the pre the premiere, the. The audio was so first, loud. We'll be taking a look at an extended section of brand new gameplay from Atomic Heart, as well as getting some of our biggest questions answered about the upcoming shooter by the developers at Munfish. Enjoy. Oh, let's get it. Last of melee combat is this Munfish says design? that every game needs balance, and Atomic Heart is no exception. We meticulously crafted each weapon so that it behaves uniquely in combat and is necessary for its way. Yes, melee helps to save ammo, because there are a lot of enemies, and it's unlikely you'll always have enough ammo to take them all out. That is why we have a special mechanic that allows us to accumulate energy in close combat, and later it can be used for shooting with special energy weapons. Okay. Many upgraded melee weapons also have special attacks that give you advantages range weapons could never do. The key is to combine weapon types and tactics, because in some fights you have to deal with many types of enemies at once. Atomic Heart has three difficulty options as Bagratuni details. Like most games, Atomic Heart has a story, medium, and hard difficulty levels. For those who want to focus on the story, for those who want to get through the game the way it was intended, and for those who are not afraid of everything in the world and have strong nerves. The difficulty level won't affect the story, so it's up to the player to relax in battles or work up a sweat. Now we gonna work up a sweat, pause. There are many more abilities available in Atomic Heart. Among them is a polymer bomb skill that allows you to cover enemies with a polymer substance that is very reactive to lightning, freeze, and fire. Director Robert Bagratuni says, you cover your opponents with polymer and then electrify them with a taser. They won't stand a chance of winning. If aggression isn't mm. your approach, take a polymer shield and then freeze, protecting yourself from attacks with the shield. Freeze your opponent at the right moment and quietly destroy them in safety. Munfish confirmed there is no fire skill in the game, but you can use special weapon attachments that make bullets incendiary. So you can combine these skills and mechanics to create some unique in-game effects such as rings of fire, electrified or freezing traps, and so on. Okay. I was hoping there would be like fire, but there is fire, but like I thought like, It depends shoot fire on how you're going to play and what weapons you prefer. The I'll take that. States. The game has mechanics that allow you to quietly get rid of both organic and mechanical enemies without attracting attention. There's also okay. an alarm system that will summon more and more robots, but even for that, there are actions to help you avoid unnecessary attention. An extensive facility ecosystem that links all the robots into a single communication network with a large number of nodes. He continues, there's no full stealth mode in the game. You can't get through it the way some games can be played without fighting. You can greatly reduce the number of enemies. You can be cautious, not raise the alarm, and use tactics both in battle and when exploring the world, but you have to fight. Okay, so you gotta scrap. You can't sneak around. You can't sneak around. You can make it, you can lighten the load, but you can't, you know what I'm saying? can't be sneaking around. The team says that working with Gordon was a joy. Mick did an amazing job for us. He set the mood in a very stylish way. There's a lot of music in the open world. It's literally filled with Mick. His music yes, matches the high tempo combat we see in the open world. It sets the mood and the emotion, and it's like telling you what to do next. But apart from Mick's work, you can find a lot of other compositions of the last century, from the 50s to the 80s. Bagratuni continues, Music is very important for immersion, especially in is. our case when you create a retro-futuristic world in which history has taken an alternate path. But great musicians of the past still wrote their songs. Soviet-style pop meets juicy Doom-style remixes. It's very mm. impressive. I like that. Yeah, if you didn't know, Mick Gordon, he did Doom, so... There is only like one metal car model you can drive composer. directly to reflect the lack of options that existed in the real USSR. As for its uses, the director says that it's quite handy when you need to get away from a large number of enemies while squashing a few robots, or if you don't want to spend a lot of time exploring the area. Oh, you can whip it. Of course, it's not a game about daily life in a big city where you use a car to get from point A to point B, but it's a wide world and a car is convenient. Maybe in the DLC, we'll add more vehicles like buses and tractors. You can whip it That's like a rental. Let's rather get it. Than what we should have focused on in this game. I like that. 
that adds a whole nother gameplay element. The devs say that the world of Atomic Heart is quite large, but creating a completely open world doesn't always work well. We were aiming for more narrative consistency here, but not to turn it into a huge map with points of interest where you go from one issue to the next, completely forgetting about the story. Beyond that, we wanted to recreate the mood of a closed secret facility, where the entrances and exits are carefully guarded. It is important to understand that laboratories and other buildings are not only above ground, but also below. If you imagine this world and try to compare it to something, it more closely resembles a mushroom tree, branching out and going in all directions. Bagratuni continues, When the player exits the first underground complex, where he is just beginning to immerse in the story and understand the strengths of his character, an open world awaits them. There are many interesting okay. territories in the open world and also carefully hidden optional locations. We are now just seeing one of them. There are quite a lot of such places, but you'll have to make an effort to find them. Apart from that, you can walk, swim, drive in any direction, look for secluded places where you can find something valuable, and collect the stories of the inhabitants of the world and everything that will help you understand the plot more deeply. There's plenty to do in Atomic Heart's world. Quite importantly, the journey through Atomic's world is seamless, with no loading screens. Now, okay, so this is going to be like a 40-hour game, for sure. Like a 40 hour game Atomic to Heart find all the locations. Game, 40, 50 hour game. Fish explains. The narrative is the main driving force behind the game. The story is told both through the environment and the huge amount of dialogue between the main characters. This includes general reasoning about what is happening, getting tasks, the relationship between the characters, the and puzzles. a large number of cutscenes that immerse you in the world and the events of the game. In Bagratuni's opinion, the story in Atomic Heart is the strongest aspect of the game. As for influences, they were inspired by many dystopian novels from the 30s and 80s by the great masters of science fiction. The story has both comic and deeply philosophical issues, drama, detective, and twists. I like that. It's the balance between combat, story, and puzzles. Bagratuni wants to keep players guessing throughout Atomic Heart. We wanted to make a game that will surprise you all the time during the whole passing, to give new, fresh sensations, events, and locations. It's kind of a roller coaster of emotions. At first, everything is bright and joyful. Then it's a horror where you're scared to make a step. Then, when you're stronger and understand how it all works, the game changes the pace, pushing you against new opponents and events. The player's experience will depend on what is more interesting to them. Some may spend a long time in the open world destroying robots to build themselves a new super-powered gun. Someone That's will decide be to unlock all the optional puzzles, where rare That's and valuable rewards await you. And some will follow the story without being distracted by the battles. I mean, I'm gonna follow the story, but I'm, I'm definitely gonna allow myself to be distracted by Bagratuni battles. Bagratuni shared that his perfect loadout is telekinesis and polymer bomb skills, passionate melee weapons mm. with its flying blade special attack, and the electro gun. He prefers to use okay. freezing ammo for close quarters combat and fire ammo for long range combat. Saying that, together with a polymer bomb and telekinesis, it makes a great all purpose set that can be used dynamically in combat. You can also make different traps for your opponents by creating a polymer halt in front of them and giving them elemental properties. Honestly, Honestly, everyone in our team plays differently. Some run through, some are more cautious and choose a strategy with shield and enemy control. But I really like to see how other people play the game differently and use some cool combinations of weapons, skills, and upgrades that I've never seen before. I don't know how we go. We gonna ramble through that deeper shit. Deeper understanding of Atomic Heart after this and all of our IGN first features on Atomic Heart. If you happen to miss any, check out a history of the we game's alternative these. Soviet world we or our these. exclusive hands-on preview. Okay, that was cool. Um, that was a nice little extended look at the gameplay. You got a long look at the gameplay. I like how um he mentioned, and you saw it there, um, that the gameplay is you know very seamless. There's no, you're not um encumbered or inhibited in any way by um loading screens. You know, so if you're in the action, you're in the action. You know, if you're traveling to a different part of the map and you go inside of a secret location like how he did, it's seamless. It's no loading. I like how that is. Um, and I think that maybe the resolution and the graphics suffer a little bit because of that. But this game still looks pretty good. Like, it still looks pretty good. I feel like, you know, a lot of games these days when they strive for that ultra realism, they go a little sometimes they might go a little bit too crazy on the graphics but this this looks pretty good this looks pretty good it still looks pretty realistic you know cuz real life you know when you're looking around and stuff if you have good vision it doesn't everything doesn't look super super sharp and 
beautiful like you would see on a video game. Now, at least not, at least not all the time. Like maybe, maybe some parts of the world where it's more beautiful and more scenic. But like you know, yeah, yeah, I know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I know what I'm talking about. Some like I don't know if you guys saw, but there was like this video where there was like a gameplay engine that was made based off photos and videos taken of the real world and if you compare that to like those videos where the, where the guys make those rtx on super high graphics everything everything on 100 you know the real life one the one the one with the photorealism looks more impressive than the rtx one because it looks like okay it looks like somebody took a camera took their camera phone went outside and started recording that's what the gameplay looked like so um i would say the most realistic game we have looking to date is you know that matrix experience thing like that's the most realistic looking game like not how it moves because they the physics they didn't really get it completely right because <laughs> I have a video on that if y'all want to check that out. The, like the the gra like it's it's like bumper cars when you bump into the cars. But like as far as how it looks, that's like super hyper like true to life realism. And, and that, this game is, you know, a little more in that vein, but in its own way, in its own way, in its own way. So yeah, so I think this is cool. I think this game is cool. Definitely going to be a game of year contender for twenty twenty three. And um, I'm excited to play. I'm excited to play. Um, what do you guys think about it? I think this. I think this game is gonna be awesome. Definitely worth the purchase. I like the. I like the. Uh, the the developer suggestion on loadouts, but I'm gonna just go. I'm gonna just thug it out and figure it out my own way. But that polymer bomb does look fire. Like you could freeze enemies and then hack them up or shoot them up. Shoot them with the incendiary, incendiary rounds. Use the telekinesis. Definitely got to have the telekinesis. Like, who wouldn't pick that? And, you know, that, that's going to be fire. So, um, y'all let me know what y'all think of this game. I'm definitely getting it. I'm for sure getting it. And we definitely going to have some gameplay on the channel for sure. So, um, y'all already know the vibes. Like, comment, subscribe, all of that good stuff. This your boy, Justice Falls, and we out.